Hello, my name is Rocio Morin de Jesus, and I am a first year PhD student at the Conesa Lab at the University of Florida. Today, I will be talking about depth analysis with long read sequencing data and its importance. The rapid development of third generation long read sequencing has resulted in an increased precision and higher throughput sequencing of transcripts. While initially long read sequencing was used mostly to study transcriptomes qualitatively, given the recent increments in sequencing depth, the quantitative capabilities of long read sequencing have increased. Because long read sequencing returns both known and novel transcript, this poses a new challenge for estimating sequencing depth and transcript detection saturation. Taking this into account, we have the following questions. Given a specific data set, is there saturation in transcript detection? How does saturation behave in different biological systems? How can we determine if the depth at which we are sequencing in our experiment is enough to capture transcript diversity? How can we estimate the depth we would need to saturate the system? In order to study this, we first redesigned the saturation function from our package Noisec, designed to analyze properties of count data from short read sequencing technologies. Its saturation function uses a multinomial model to predict transcript detection values at different depth levels. However, this method does not really work with longest sequencing due to the structure of the data. Firstly, the data to be used is analyzed with Scanti, a software created by the Conesa Lab for the classification, curation, and quantification of a long read sequencing transcriptome. Here, transcripts are classified according to their similarities to a reference transcript. This image shows the possible categories for the transcripts. Some of these categories include full splice matches, which are those transcripts sharing all splice junctions with the reference transcript. Incomplete splice matches are those transcripts matching consecutive but not all splice junctions with the reference transcript. Novel in catalog transcripts contain new combinations of annotated splice junctions and novel not in catalog, which are novel transcripts using novel donors and or acceptors. Three separate datasets were run through Scanty to later be used in our adapted function. The datasets used were a melanoma dataset available at the PacBio GitHub, which has two samples, an Alzheimer dataset also available at the PacBio GitHub and in sequence with SQL2, showing a higher sequencing depth, as well as an in-house tomato dataset. In our function, firstly, data is written, and this user has the option of adding in the scanty classification information, as well as scanty biotype information, which is if the transcript is coding or non-coding. Afterwards, data is subsampled and information of transcript detection is extracted for all transcripts, different biotypes, and different categories. We can also select a detection threshold K, which is the minimum transcript count considered for transcript detection. The output from this function holds all the generated information. This output is fed into a separate function for modeling and plotting. Here, the user selects which samples to plot as well as which level, either global, category, or biotype. The selected options are fed into a prediction model that uses a first-order smoothed penalized B-spline regression to predict transcript detection saturation values at different coverage levels. Finally, this information is plotted. Now we will move on to the results obtained. Firstly, as we can see here, the saturation plots generated with this function can be used to analyze different levels of saturation within samples. As we can see with one of the samples from the melanoma set, using a threshold that of k equal 1, we can analyze the global saturation, as well as the scanty classification and the biotype classification. We also observe that different samples within a data set behave similarly even when changing the detector's threshold. We can observe this again with the melanoma data set, but this time analyzing both samples. Both present a similar behavior even when changing the threshold. Furthermore, scanty categories have different ratios of saturation, and different biological systems show differences in the saturation of categories. For example, in the Alzheimer plot, the number of novel in catalog transcripts detected appears to be much higher than in melanoma and tomato, where false place matches appear to be the predominant category. This suggests that at higher depths, more novel transcripts are captured. Interestingly, the detection threshold also affects in a different manner the saturation of different scanty classification categories. At k equal 1, all categories present saturation, but that changes as we increase the threshold. Additionally, as we increase the threshold, full place matches become more predominant than novel in catalog transcripts, and they show a tendency to saturation while novel transcripts do not. 
finally, as we can observe, different biological systems show some differences but behave similarly. For, from the melanoma data sets, we can observe that even at k equal 1, there doesn't appear to be any saturation. However, in the tomato data sets, we can observe saturation at a much lower sequencing depth. This could be due to number of transcripts in each data set, pointing to more complex systems requiring more coverage for saturation. This can be seen in the Alzheimer data set, sequence with SQL2, which has a much higher sequencing depth, and it appears to saturate the system at k equal 1. However, different biological systems sequenced at a higher sequencing depths are needed to truly compare differences between them. In conclusion, saturation plots allow the user to compare saturation across different samples and at different levels. Some of the discoveries show that samples within the same database have a similar behavior. Different structural categories have different ratios of saturation, and conclusions about saturation will depend on the threshold to be utilized. Also, when comparing between different biological systems, we find they have a somewhat similar behavior, but a higher depth is needed to determine if biological systems show differences in identified transcripts, which might translate to differences in saturation. Coverage obtained with SQL2 appears to be enough to saturate the system, showing changes in full splice matches and in novel transcripts. This functionality has been adopted and is now a part of Scanty3. With this, I would like to thank you for your time and attention.